the Hilux is back in the shed. We've got a bunch of new upgrades planned to turn a track weapon into a touring machine. Well, we're down at the shed at the moment with my little pony and, again. and Jocko, and um, we're getting ready for our big trip to Fraser Island. Now, it's a shakedown for the Dirty 30. It's almost done behind us here, and um, I've got a couple of little things to do for that. But for this one here, we're gonna completely transform my little pony into an absolute touring weapon. Now, Jocko spent all his money on, you know, I was gonna say go fast, that wasn't go fast, it wasn't performance mods, full drive mods to get this thing to drive second place in the Bush Mechanic Challenge. Now, he did a good job on that, there's no doubt about it, but we're here to make this thing into a touring weapon. So we're thinking, let's build a canopy. Yeah, yeah, and I've also got a super budget and awesome little 12 volt system I'm gonna put in as well. And the catch is, we've got about 30 hours and about a thousand bucks to build a canopy. So um, stick with us folks and hopefully get a little bit of inspiration out of this and maybe if we can do some cheap mods and make this thing an absolute weapon, well, it should give you the confidence to do some jobs at home on your own four wheel drive. So. Let's get into it, mate, because we do not have much time. Yeah, we've got a canopy don't. in a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. What are we thinking? No, we'll be right. Let's do it, eh? <laughs> Despite a lot of jobs to get into, Jock's decided the first job for the day is to remove the Luxie's custom paint job. And I have to say, I'm a little bit disappointed. It'll always be the little pony Lux to me. Can't lose all my horsepower, so I'm just going to leave one little pony in the, uh, in the cab. The biggest job of the build, of course, is fabbing up a new canopy. And given we're on a tight budget, the design for this one was done a little on the cheap. All right, so last night we had a bit of a think about this. Jock and I came down here with a few beers and then a few more beers. We came yeah. up with a few measurements, a bit of a plan of attack. Yep. So bear That's, with me. It's just a great <laughs> <joke>. <laughs> Took us about three seconds to do this, believe it or not. No, actually, it took us a while. <laughs> yeah. It took us a while. Bear with this artist's interpretation of what's going on here. That's a tub. That's a tyre. This is a canopy. It's going to go up straight, then on a bit of an angle. You can see here, we've taken our time and really drawn that together. Mm -hmm. We're going to try and make this as simple as possible. Yep. Um, it's going to be cheap, but also it's going to be quite practical as well. That's yeah, the definitely, plan. Definitely. And I think we should uh, check these measurements again anyway. And then, yeah, uh, let's do that. Let's go and measure it, cut yep. some steel, and then um, get ready. And here's a little tip for you as well. If you don't consider yourself a fabricator, there's no reason why you shouldn't maybe consider a job like this. This is a pretty easy sort of fabrication job. We're certainly not fabricators. Definitely not. In fact, I taught myself how to weld from watching YouTube videos. And if we can do it, so can you. All right, mate, was that 250 on that side or that side? Let's check. <laughs> <laughs> the steel frame of our canopy will bolt directly down onto the sides of the tray. And after a bit of a double checking on the measurements, Jocko soon has the verticals ready to cut. After prepping the cuts for welding, it's time to jump onto one of my favourite tools in the shed. And just like Jock on a date night, when it comes to welding, what I lack in experience, I make up for enthusiasm. What I'm doing here, before I weld anything significant, I'm just setting the welder up so I know it's going to be welding this two mil steel uh, well. I reckon half the battle when you're welding is just trying to set your welder up. Once you get the welder sorted, pretty much anyone, including me, can weld. So I think I've made it a little bit hot. I'm starting to blow little holes through the metal, so I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. I'll turn the amps and the volts down. Fracco. Try that. Better. I think we're on, mate. I think yeah. we're on. That's not too bad. No, that'll work. Nice and strong, anyway. Hasn't, I haven't been able to break it, so. Yeah, yeah for trusting you with the tensile strength of it, mate, it'll be sweet. <laughs> As I weld together all the vertical beams, Jocko is preparing the bases that'll mount them to the Hilux's tub. Righto, so we didn't actually have any angle with us. Uh, someone forgot to buy some, Sean. Uh, so what I did instead is just cut some um, SHS or some box in half at each corner so that um, it'll sit on the tub. The plan is these are gonna be the feet for the canopy. We'll cut these so you, there's one foot on each corner and it'll sit up against the top of the tub like that and then you can bolt through. Before we mount the verticals to the bases, I'm gonna grind down some of those welds, which will also help our planned canvas cover fit closely to the frame. So I'm just getting ready to set these feet up. What I'm gonna do with the two front ones is cut them about halfway on this back section here that, so you can slide the foot forward to the front of the tub. I've also gotta cut the headboard off, so I've just put a drop sheet on the back of the vehicle so I don't damage it with grinding sparks, so I don't accidentally put the grinding wheel into the back of the cab, which I definitely want to avoid. With the headboard gone, the canopy will fit snugly behind the cab. And although I don't want to call it too early, I reckon this home jobby is going to come up looking pretty mint. 
How you going, mate? Good. Uh, headboard's cut off. I just, I'm going to tidy these up with a flappy. Yep, yep. And then I'm going to do a bit more of these mounts. How'd you go with the... Yeah, we've got four that are roughly the same. <laughs> roughly the same? So, yeah, they, they look all right. They're, um, oh, they're not pretty. Once you get a bit of paint on them, they'll look better. That's okay. But um, that's what we're dealing with all here. All right, good. And then once we get that up, we can just put the uprights or the tops in place and then um, yep. tack them on. And... I think so. We'll yeah, build, cool. it, build it almost on the tray after that. Yeah. That's a good way to try and get those angles close to perfect as possible. Yeah. Try and build it on the tray. Can... Two master fabricators, oh, mate. Oh, what could go wrong? <laughs> yeah. The next step is to line up the feet and drill some mounting points. And with a couple of blokes on the job, it doesn't take too long to get everything in place and ready for the welder. I'm doing here is I'm just um, basically bolting this bracket up so um, before I weld obviously the angle to it now the reason I'm doing that is I want it to stay in one spot I don't want it to move and um, this is of course where it's going to bolt when it's all finished up I'm going to use nylock nuts when we do it properly but this is just to temporarily hold it in also when we weld that that metal is going to want to move a little bit as well so I'm just going to tack it on first and um, try and get our angle perfect on both sides before we go and finish it off and it will also put the top support in as well it'll keep the whole thing quite rigid and then we'll be able to tack it all together and then go for a couple of hero welds get it all nice and strong and then um, we'll have to take it off with painting we're well on the way so a handy tip if you are doing any welding uh, on the vehicle even though we're not welding directly to the body uh, or the chassis or anything like that it is good practice just to take the negative strap off the battery. It takes two seconds and uh, can help protect your electrics. Now, of course, this is a backyard build and we're not exactly fabrication experts, if you haven't told by now. So there's a little bit of eyeballing going on. I can about use not very straight, Jocko. <laughs> a lot of things about me are very straight, mate. How many canopies have you built just out of interest? Oh, not many. How many have you built? Zero. <laughs> Big old zero. And speaking of, I might have made a first timer's mistake on this one. Hold for attack. Right. Did a double hit. <laughs> <laughs> one, more, one more, no more. <laughs> Sean had a few guys attacking the, uh, the uprights, and it wasn't really working for you. I just cut one off to check, and there's a few porosity holes in it. I think someone forgot to turn the gas back on. I think someone's a nerd, mate. Let's just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Sounds like it's got gas in it. <laughs> <laughs> Just see if it's straight, mate. That's the... Actually, if anyone should be checking it straight, it's probably me, not you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that looks pretty good. To be honest, we don't have the math skills or the right tools to have pre-calculated the angle for the cuts to marry the cross beams to the uprights. So we're doing it with the uprights in place. Of course, this does come with a downside. We've got a couple of little marks here. We want to try and cut this on an angle, that on an angle, so it all goes together. Now, as you know, We've got a specific length that we need to keep everything level and um, we've got one chance of doing this right. If otherwise, we're in trouble. We'll keep cutting and eventually we'll be right. This is a pretty important part of the build. So we take our time and measure twice before cutting. And soon enough, we've got everything lined up pretty decently. And then we tack the cross beams into place and measure up for an extra support piece. For a couple of very average four-wheel drivers, <laughs> we're making some, I don't know, some progress, man. Yeah, I'm actually there. digging that. I reckon it's pretty cool. This is all level, folks. We can confirm that. <laughs> Angles, I'm not too sure about, but it's looking all right. And like, it looks good. Yeah, and, um, for quick maths and stuff, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's not too bad at all. We'll do the, the rear, of course. Yeah. We'll put some supports between it. We're just tack welding everything together at the moment. Then we'll take it off, weld it all properly, um, give it a coat of paint, and then we're... We're laughing. We're nearly got a canopy done. Yep. We obviously need some canvas on the on on three sides, not the fourth. We're going to put some alloy across there, alloy roof on it, a um, couple more supports and all that sort of stuff. But once the angles are taking the time, I think if yeah. we're just doing 90 degree welding, it'd be so much easier. Yeah. But this is good. Time for the back end of the canopy frame. And now we're really starting to get into the groove of things. Now, no doubt you would have noticed we're using some woodwork clamps for this project. Now, the truth of the matter is, this is a backyard job and we don't have all the tools required to do this properly, but we're making do with what we have. Yeah, 
That's the best one we've done. <laughs> Gee, hey, we're getting better at it. Yeah. But the next canopy we make after this will be yeah. mine. Shauna and Jock's fabrications. <laughs> it's got a ring to it, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, folks. Sean and Jock Customs is not going to become a thing. Unless some of you are keen to let us have a crack at your rig, of course. For us, the next step is completing our canopy frame. And pretty soon, this little ripper is starting to come together. Very cool. After a fair bit of time on the tools, we've got everything cut and the full frame tacked into position. Not too bad for an afternoon down in the shed. I'm pretty stoked with that. Look, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but as soon as we fully weld it, we've tacked everything into position now, we just need to fully weld it. I reckon it's going to look all right. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Once it gets some canvas and some paint on it, it'll hide any imperfections we may or may not have. <laughs> exactly but, uh, right. No, I reckon that'd be good. What do you reckon? How about you weld that side and I'll weld this side? Sounds like a plan, mate. Right so, well, when you're on Fraser and that side collapses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, here's a little tip if you're using a gas MIG welder like we are. If the conditions are quite windy outside, it'll actually blow the gas away and make your welds not very good at all. But luckily today, there's no wind around, so we're welding it outside. Seriously, Jocko, try and keep the lugs upright next time around, mate. I'm pretty happy with the welds, and I don't need you ruining it. The frame is soon all stitched together. And while those welds might not look that pretty, they're really strong. And now we can take the frame off and give it a lick of paint, which should bring it up an absolute treat. Give you those ones, Jocko. Thanks, mate. Now I've got to say, this is the first canopy I've ever built with Jocko, of course. And there's a sense of achievement. I mean, I've never tried to build a canopy. I've always thought that's well out of my pay grade. And um, sort of got me thinking, what have you done to your four-wheel drive? You know, something that you're probably out of your depth on, you've given it a go and you've come up trumps. Or if you haven't come up trumps, let us know in the comments below. Very keen to see what projects you've been involved in lately on your four-wheel drive. Oh, look at that. Lightweight. Light but strong. I like those mounts. Just like Jocko. <laughs> Lightweight and strong. Yep. You can tell the side you welded, mate. Before we get into painting this bad boy, we're going to clean up some of the remaining welds. Then we're going to give it a spray using some metal shield. Now that's got a primer as well as a top coat in the one can. It's going to make things a heck of a lot easier. Looking good, mate. Yeah, I think it's come up all right for... Look at that, bit of black paint. Yeah. Holy heck, cheers, mate. Cheers. What a cracking day, eh? Yeah, and it took, what, about maybe five hours or so? Five or six hours today. Yep. Not long at all. And, um, you know, I, spent, I think we spent most of the time working out those angles. Yeah. And um, we're certainly not experts. I've got a, I've got a really... You know, I've got to really press upon you guys that we're not experts, we're not fabricators. Um, we're just a couple of blokes in the shed having a bit of a go. Yeah. And um, it goes to show though, if you, if you put your mind to something, you can get it done. 100%. Tomorrow, um, we're going to get stuck back into it, put the roof on, which will be really easy. We've got an aluminium roof, that, I think some checker plate, I'll have to yeah, go pick some checker plate nice, up. Yeah. Pop rivet that in. Um, we've got a mate of ours coming to put some canvas on as well. Can't wait for that, because yeah. I reckon the canvas That'll make that'll it look nice. Absolutely yeah. make it. That'll take it from a home job into something quite professional. Obviously, we're not skilled enough to work with canvas, so we're going to call in the experts there. Yeah, definitely. What's that? What's what? Oh, you... no, oh, sorry, yeah. no, oh. I missed. I missed. I missed. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness, I reckon we just finish this beer off. Um, there's a few patches every now and again where I might just. Yeah, there we go. Oh, we'll that's back run. again. We'll just clean up here, and I reckon tomorrow, mate, get stuck in. Yeah, sounds good. Mm -hmm. In the light of the morning, Jock's new canopy frame isn't looking half bad. We've got a lot of work left to do to get this canopy finished today and in time for our trip to Fraser tomorrow. This is my most awkward way of carrying it. Oh, whoa. Let's scratch the top. <laughs> <laughs> Made that hard, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. That is beautiful. Let's get some bolts into that. Yeah. Crikey, there's some welds over this side, isn't there? Yeah, mate. <laughs> good welds from a good bloke. <laughs> <laughs> One of the really cool things about this canopy is the fact that it's removable. So that means, you know, should we ever want to take this canopy off, it really is easy. Just a few bolts and the whole thing lifts straight off. It's actually nice and lightweight as well, so. Quick camping setup. Just put it on, take it off when you don't need it. Exactly right. Easy. 
exactly right. Jocko rolls his truck again, <laughs> which is a high possibility. Very we're, high. We're going to take the canopy off and give it to someone else more deserving. But... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I've still, still got nothing on that. A bunch of bolts later, and the canopy is sitting pretty solidly on the Lux. You know what we should have done before we bolted it on? Mm. Let's put the headboard on. Oh! <laughs> Yes. How is it fits though? We, we yeah. get good at tightening nuts up. For the headboard and the roof, we're getting on the blower to a metal shop Ooh. down the road. We're going to cut out some aluminium checker plate to suit. It'll make it a cheap, strong, and light solution for the new canopy. While I'm on the measurements, Jock is planning out another DIY setup for the back of the Lux. It's going to be the makings of my state of the art draw system. Have a guess what's going to be in this one? My spares, I reckon. The plan is maybe sit two tubs like that, and then maybe if I can fit a fridge on this side or something like that. That's really cool. Yeah. So you can build a false floor through here. Yep. Little end cap here. The tub will stop these drawers from moving around. Yep. Drawers, um, when I say drawers. Drawers, yeah. Like really lightly. But that's perfect. Though. I've got it's a cheap mod though. Yeah. And I've got a battery to sit up in, in the front there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it'll be really good. We've got enough room to put some stuff, like your swag yeah, or whatever. Swag and things, and now we've got all this space as well. Super S mega to run. Yeah, we're on. <laughs> we're going to knock up the drawer frames from plywood, and with more measurements done, we've put together a shopping list for Jock to take to the local hardware store. After watching how the boy shops, I'm glad I sent him out by himself. Jock, you're one of a kind, mate. Back at the shed, a mate of ours has stopped by. Alan runs a canvas company called Sea Island Canopies. It's local to our area and reckons he can knock out a basic covering for us today. I reckon if anyone can make this canopy look good, it's gotta be Alan. To speed things along, Alan has left me with the canvas sail tracks to fit as he goes back to his workshop to cut the canvas. Alan will do another set of measurements after the first fitting before a final install, attaching zips and hooks to keep everything looking smick. Jock's come back from the shop with a bunch of ply and gets stuck right into his new drawer system. Righto, so that'll sit like that. And just put a little divider in the middle. Oh yeah. And then cap it off at the top. What an easy set of drawers. Yeah, super simple. And um, turn them this way so that I can still fit a fridge behind and also have a little bit of storage space as well, but yeah, super simple drawers. Oh, that hits there, hopefully that clears still. <laughs> <laughs> he's measured once, he's gonna be cutting twice, yep. folks. Now credit to Jock. This is a pretty simple and awesome setup. It costs next to nothing. It'll give you an easy way to store his camping gear and spares on Fraser. Tell you what, they're gonna be snug. Oh, that's but, what you want though. But that's what you want to, like, considering I found these at Bunnings, they were 652 wide and I was like, yeah, that should work. And Perfect. Perfect. Perfect, mate. That's very good. So well, it, the track's coming along good. That's yep. all in. Um, just waiting for that aluminium to be cut to the roof. Yep. And we're on. To finish off the drawer system, Jock just needs to put some pilot holes for the divider and then screw everything together. And once the rain stops, we're going to apply a lick of paint. While we wait, the aluminium arrives, so we get started on the canopy roof. To secure the roof, we're first going to glue it down with a bit of Sikaflex, and later we'll screw it to the steel frame as we secure those canvas sail tracks. The sail tracks are in just in time, as Alan has already done the initial canvas cutout, and he's back to take the next set of measurements. I reckon this is going to be one tidy looking canopy by the end of today, especially with paint skills like these. Now look at that technique, would ya? Mate, I think these have gone from $100 drawers to $110 drawers. By... <laughs> <laughs> so we've used about 50 bucks of paint to get there. Yeah, easy. <laughs> oh, sorry, oh. mate. <laughs> Should we initial like an artist's impression? Yeah. You do that one. Oh, I just wrote Jaden. I can't <laughs> write my name. While we've been arting it up on the sidelines, the canvas has been measured up, and Alan heads off to do the final cutting and stitching. We've put together the last couple of rivets to hold on the roof properly. One more. One more, no more, mate. How good's that? Got a roof. We've got a roof, mate, and it's nice and stable too. Yeah. I reckon by the end of today, mate, 
It'll be completely done. It's like a day and a half canopy. Yeah. Full, actually, not just canopy, full touring setup. Two qualified fabricators, <laughs> full touring setup in a day and a half. I like the sound of that. Of course, we've still got to get the headboard on. Oh, so it's off again with the canopy. But that's one of the cool things about this canopy. With just a few bolts, this canopy can be lifted on and off very easily. With a few more rivets and a little bit more sicker flex to seal it all up, it's time to get this bad boy bolted back in and ready for the final installs. <laughs> With a lift above your head, that's real good. <laughs> oh, that made me laugh. Well, Jocko, it's getting almighty close to beer o'clock, mate, so I might leave you with it, mate. And yeah. No. Look, I'm just going to bolt this down, uh, yep. put my Super Tour draw system in. Your draw system. My tubby boys. And you're about and then... done, or? Ah, uh, then I've got to do 12 volts. <laughs> oh, it's all right. It's, I can't. It's the night before we're going to Fraser, so you, you've got to. It literally yourself, is the night before. You've, you've got a few hours up your sleeve. Yeah, that won't take long. I like, I'll just, you know. All right, mate. Well, I've got to get the 30 going. Yep. And um, packed. Yep. So it's running. I just need to get it packed, okay, mate. So we've both got a bit to do. Got a bit to do. So yeah. I'm going to leave you this one, mate. Good luck. Thanks, mate. A long day is turning into a long night as Alan returns with some freshly stitched canvas that fits the canopy like a glove. And look at that, not bad for a budget solution. And after we've secured the canvas down, I reckon it looks as good as a bought canopy. What do you reckon? Looks too good for you, mate, that's for sure. <laughs> it's beautiful. Look how taut it is. I'm half tempted to swap the Dirty 30 for this. This is a work of art. With the canopy done, I've still got to get my 12 volt system in. Luckily, I've got a trick new setup to make things a bit easier. Righto, the canvas is done. I reckon it looks absolutely unreal. Got a few more finishing touches to do though to make it a bit more of a tour. I've actually got a uh, kick-ass battery box and it's got a DC charger on the top. So all I need to do is plug it in and then I've got a dual battery system. So I went and bought a whole bunch of wire and stuff like that. So all I gotta do is run it to the crank battery and plug it all in, I should be good to go. All I'm doing here is running a positive and negative cable back to the crank battery. I'm running it through the tub and along the chassis and protecting the wires and split perforated tubing and cable tying everything out of the way. Make sure if you're doing a cable run like this, you keep the cable away from any moving parts and also keep it away from your hot exhaust system as well. I'm also adding heat shrink to the cable as well to keep it a bit more bush proof. What I love about this is I've just put an Anderson plug on this end, connect it up, and I've got a 25 amp charger and a 120 amp hour battery. Super Tourer. I'm also going to put a MIDI fuse in line in the engine bay to keep things safe. Righto, let's see if she's charging. How good's that? Happy days, I've got a dual battery system. Time to put the fridge in, 75 litres. It's even got a freezer too, so might chuck a few sneaky ice creams in there for Fraser, which would be good. And just like that, I've got a fridge. What a rig this Luxie's turning out to be, eh? So, mate, this is looking mate, so good. I think it looks very cool. Yeah. Look, I just, I can't believe that it was only yesterday about lunchtime we started, and I thought when we first started cutting a few bits, we were trying to work out those angles. Yeah. Oh, I was like, like, oh no. This is not going to happen. Reminded mate. me of like finishing maths in <laughs> high school and being like, <laughs> Yeah. But this is kind of a treat. I've yeah. got to say, the canvas has absolutely made it. Yeah, that, definitely, definitely. It just looks so good. It looks. It looks really good, man. That is a fantastic yeah. job and something we should be proud of. I mean, that's the first canopy I've ever been involved in building. I've got to say, it's probably going to be the last one. No, <laughs> just joking as well. Look, it wasn't that hard. You know, we worked it out and this goes to show, if you're thinking about doing a project on your truck, doesn't matter what your budget is, give it a go. Doesn't matter what your skill level is, <laughs> give, it, give it a go. If you've got Sean on your team, <laughs> anything's possible. It is possible. Look, we get, made it work. And um, look, I'm going to go back and pack the 30 now. Yep, I've got to pack this too, and I think I'll give it a bit of a check over and she'll be good to go. We'll see you on Fraser. Very good, see you there. <laughs>
The long nights are absolutely worth it when you catch your first glimpse of Fraser and roll onto the island ferry. And with the Luxie all loaded up with my new touring setup, I'm chasing to catch up with Sean and the rest of the crew who are already on the island. How good is this? Fraser Island, I just jumped off the ferry. I'm gonna go meet the boys at the pub. I left a little bit later this morning because I had to do a few last minute mods to the Pony Luxie. Even chuck some Max Trax holders on the roof. Have a go at that canopy though. I reckon it's come up an absolute treat. For a couple of days, and even with a bloke like Sean doing some of the welds, I reckon it looks pretty schmick and I'm pretty keen to uh, test the Luxie out on Fraser for the next few days. Thanks so much for watching and if you've got any tips for what we should do next to the little beast, leave them in the comments below and I might uh, steal a few ideas. As always, be sure to like, comment and subscribe to 4 Drive 24-7. Cheers, guys. If you've enjoyed today's app, you'll love what we've got in store for you next week as we take on the tough tracks of Coffs Harbour. This feels so wild. It's east versus west as Graeme joins us for the weekend from his side of the country, exploring the remote WA coastline. Don't miss all the action next Thursday on YouTube.